My name is Land, Senior Instructor here at Thrust Flight, and today I'm here to talk to you all about the pros and cons of flying a high wing aircraft versus a low wing aircraft. One of the primary differences between the two is visibility. So with a high wing, when you're flying in the air or when you're flying to some destination or flying at all, you can actually look over and see the ground. You can see essentially what's under you. So as you, let's say you're making a VFR cross country to Addison to Tyler again in this example, our students are supposed to put their flight plan checkpoints 10, 15 nautical miles apart that they can say, hey, okay, if I'm here, then I know I'm on my way and I've reached it at this particular time or I've, uh, I've got this much fuel left, right? So I know I'm over my checkpoint and I look down and there it is. In the same scenario with a low wing like the Archer, you can't see under you. So how do you know if you've reached that particular checkpoint? How do you know that you went over it at that exact time that you've marked on your, on your flight plan? For my students, what I advise is that, okay, choose a checkpoint under you, but go perpendicular to your route of flight and choose a checkpoint about five miles to your left or right, one that you can see at the edge of your wingtip. So you can kind of estimate where, where you are by looking out and saying, oh wait, there's Rockwall Airport. Okay, I must be right over the southeastern edge of Lake Ray Hubbard. So, okay, I've made my checkpoint. Or, you know, if I'm over Terrell Airport, and that's a pretty, pretty easy checkpoint to know that you're flying over, but you don't see it under you, okay, right there is Highway 20. I can see Highway 20, I, I'm over my checkpoint, let's move on to the next one. So, in a high wing, it's easier visibility down in a low wing for your flight plan, you're gonna to have to probably put something left or right of your flight of course to be able to actually see that you're at your checkpoint, that you're near the one that is below you. Uh, in a high wing, you can't see above you. So one of the dangers of that here at Addison, we're, we're at a towered airport, right? So once we get to the end of the runway, we can, be, we can call up tower and we can say thrust 44, holding short 1-6, ready for VFR departure to the east. Tower will clear you to take off. You don't have to really worry about uh, aircraft that are coming in on final. If you're an untowered airport, one of your duties is to make sure that there are no aircraft on final. And if you're lined up with the, let's say this is the runway, if you're lined up to the runway and the final approach path is coming this way, you've got a high wing up here, you can't see the final approach path, right? Your line of sight is blocking the final approach path. So two ways you can mitigate that is by one, radio calls on the common traffic advisory frequency, and two, by actually turning parallel to the final approach path and actually looking down the final approach path before you make a radio call and taxi onto the runway. When I go to untowered airports in a high wing, I'm looking down the final approach fix before I go onto the runway because radio calls at untowered airports while I would love for everybody to do them correctly all the time, not everybody out there makes common radio calls like that. So in a high wing at an untowered airport, if uh, say Rockwall for instance, I'm looking this way before I get onto the runway, I'm turning the airplane parallel to the runway and looking down the final approach course, making sure it's clear before I taxi onto the runway and take off. In a low wing airplane, flying at night is pretty. You can see stars. You go out to a really dark place like southeastern Arkansas or, or central west Texas, southeastern Colorado, not a, not, not a light in the sky. You, you can see the Milky Way, you can see the stars, you can see everything in the low wing. In a high wing at night, you see just pretty ground lights. I love flying at night. When you're coming in from across country and you see Dallas spread out all over you and all those sodium lights and see the highways and see the buildings lit up and see all the lights coming in from into DFW and Dallas Love, it's pretty. It's, it's just flying at night is one of my favorites and I'll take it a high wing or a low wing regardless. So high wing, I see the high, high wing, I see the ground, low wing, I see the stars. I'll take both. Okay, so which one is more fun to fly? The a high wing or a low wing? <sighs> I would say a low wing is more comfortable to, is a more comfortable cruiser. So it's more comfortable to go cross country in. Uh, it's more stable, at least the Archer is. It's more comfortable to fly in. A high wing, like our Skyhawk, I find it dances better in the sky. 
it flies better, it handles better, it doesn't feel as heavy. But then again, we're going to class specifics, right? I mean, I'll take flying any day of the week, but if I'm flying from here to, I don't know, a beach house, then I'll take a low wing. If I'm flying for fun, I'll take a high wing. So now that you know my opinion on high wings and low wings, we'd like to know which one y'all prefer. Do you prefer a uh, high wing aircraft or a low wing aircraft? Which one do you like to fly the most? Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Hi guys, my name is, oh god, that was so sarcastic. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi guys. All right. Hi guys, my name is Land, and I'm a senior flight instructor here at Thrust Flight. I'm here to talk to you about... Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> Hi y'all, my name is Land, and uh, I'm a senior instructor here at Thrust Flight. I'm here to talk to y'all today about the pros and cons of flying a high wing versus a low wing aircraft. <laughs>